All right, let's begin. Hi again. Hi again, everyone. My name is Yolanda. I'm part of the Publisher Solutions team here at Facebook Audience Network. Today's webinar will focus on ad monetization insights for game publishers. A lot of what we discussed today is applicable across multiple verticals, but I'll be discussing it from the gaming perspective because that's what our research covers. After the presentation, there will be a live Q&A session, so please send in your questions as you get them, and I'll, be, I'll do my best to answer them at the end. This is the agenda that we'll be covering today. We will be starting with our journey today. So we'll go through some numbers, some product updates, and some best practices. First, I'll walk us through the insights from our latest product research. After this, you'll hear all about the new products that we're building and the best practices to help you maximize your performance with ads. But first, I wanna show you where gaming is headed. This graph shows where consumers are spending their money and it's clear that mobile games are going global. Mobile phones are now the most popular video game consoles in the world. We know this is a big market for gaming app developers. In 2018 alone, there were 2.2 billion, billion global gamers. The global games market had $137.9 billion in revenue and there was $70.3 billion in revenue for games on smartphone and tablets. Facebook commissioned research with Walnut Unlimited to explore how well global game publishers and developers understand, use, and maximize different monetization options. Walnut surveyed 173 publishers and developers who have a role in the deployment and the choice of monetization strategies for their games. We're excited to share the results with you. So this research shows that a majority of game developers believe that ads can improve player retention without detracting from the game experience. But how did we get here? Two thousand eight kicked off the dawn of the iPhone era, where play to download was king. Ads were considered a dirty word in the tech industry, with the vast majority of mobile apps shunning them. This was also when Facebook itself began experimenting with in-app ads for the very first time. Starting in 2013, we began to see the rise of the free-to-play era. Here, people could download games for free, but then spend their money on in-app purchases. 2013 was also around the time that Facebook started to get serious about making money with ads in its own mobile app, and this wasn't a popular move at the time. Finally, in 2017, we began to see the rise of hypercasual, and with it, the balance starts shifting towards in-app ads in mobile gaming. Last year was the first year that developers' perspe perspectives went from ads were a big problem to ads are a big opportunity in games. How did this happen? I want to share with you what we've learned about the reasons for this. When developers were asked which monetization model they used, over half were using a hybrid solution. This is a combination of in-app ads and in-app purchases. Ads used to be a problem for developers. So why are ads starting to play a more strategic role? The answer is in ad formats. Certain formats have been particularly effective at generating increased revenue while still retaining users. This came through in a question we asked the developer community about their most preferred ad format. Of, develop, of developers who use mainly in-app monetization, 82% find rewarded video most successful. Rewarded video is a clear winner and there's no surprise. Everyone stands again with this ad format, the players, the advertisers, and you, the developers. So there's consensus that rewarded video works, but we wanted to understand why from the developer community. Developers are changing their perspective on in-app advertising thanks to rewarded video for four reasons. The format sits in the same value space as in-app purchases. The player is exchanging their time rather than money for something valuable inside the game. Over two in three developers, about 65%, agree that in-app ads are complementary 
as a way to generate incremental revenue. Rewarded video is driving incremental revenue in games in a way that both complementary to and also a gateway for more in-app purchases as well. All this while improving user retention as well. So we want to zoom out a bit and look at the evolution of the market overall. And when we did, one thing stood out clearly to us. Rewarded video is growing nearly three times faster than the rest of the market. It may sound a bit extreme, but this format is bringing in skeptics into the fold and truly helping open up the gaming vertical to add monetization. Now moving on in our journey, we're going to talk about Facebook Audience Network and how we can help you monetize your game successfully. First, a little about Audience Network. We're a people-based ad network that's designed with the experience in mind. We build high value ad formats and innovative developer tools. We only serve high quality ads from Facebook advertisers and we're passionate about helping you grow your business. Audience Network is young but rapidly becoming one of the best partners to the gaming industry. In 2018, the total number of active publishers on Audience Network grew more than 20% from 2017 to 2018. The total number of active gaming publishers on Audience Network grew more than one and a half times in that time. Payouts to gaming publishers from Audience Network rewarded video increased more than eight times from 2017 to 2018. This is how we view the world. When you deliver great ad experiences to people, advertisers see real outcomes, which means more money for publishers. Here's how it works. It starts with delivering great ad experiences to people. Sorry about that, guys. All right, back on the right slide. So it starts with delivering great ad experiences for people. Great ad experiences delivers value for advertisers by helping them achieve their campaign objectives. As advertisers see greater value from their advertising investment, their confidence grows. This drives more advertiser investment into the ad ecosystem. The more demand from advertiser increases, the auction density and competition for your inventory as well. This ultimately translates into better CPMs and monetization opportunities for you. And this sustainable cycle creates a healthy ecosystem where everyone, people, advertisers, and publishers win. Next, let's talk about playable ads. Playable ads allow people to try before they buy through an immersive experience. People can play a mini version of the game before they decide whether they'd like to install from the App Store. We're excited to say that playable are now available in both our rewarded video and our interstitial formats in our latest SDK. Here's an example from Small Giant Games so users get a feeling of what the awesome empire and puzzle games is about. We've seen strong results for both advertisers and publishers, and therefore we're expecting to see strong growth from this format. And it's not just us saying this. You can see here that Explosives, their CPMs on rewarded video increased by 107%. Additionally, the user experience is great as the design informs users when an ad is playable. And you can benefit from these CPM gains too through playable ads in our latest SDK. The next update is that we're working to open up rewarded video to all gaming apps and audience network. And we're looking 
at expanding to additional verticals as well. So we just talked about the importance of rewarded video to gaming apps. As you can see, Audience Network is clearly one of the key players in the market for rewarded video. Here's a view of the relationship between impression volume, the number of ads that are served, and the first impression CPM, the price paid to the developer, for rewarded video across ad networks. Having spoken to dozens of gaming developers, it's clear there are two metrics that matter the most when it comes to performance. Further, we're excited to share that we are working to make rewarded video available for all gaming apps on Audience Network. This has now been rolled out. So you should look out for this format in your monetization manager dashboard, and you can have the benefit of a strong CPM and engaging experience from it. So now let's talk about how we're going to help you get started and succeed with Audience Network. We're going to touch on best practices for working with Audience Network. Here are three things to consider in working with your in-game ads. The first, integrate reward video as you build your game. The second is to test and iterate on ad frequency. And the third is install or update the Audience Network SDK. It's clear by now that in-app ads are complementary to in-app purchases. So when you're thinking about your monetization strategy, make sure it's holistic. If you've built a game with in-app purchases at launch and later want to include ads, it requires time and investment to retrofit because you need to consider what will it'll do to balance and progress within the game flow. The next best practice is around optimizing your ad frequency, which is the number of times each user sees an ad in a day. You need to review the relation between the number of ads a user sees to the amount of revenue generated. There's a point where more ads don't necessarily generate more revenue and could even lead to churn. There's a common misconception that the more ads you show, the more revenue you'll generate, but that might not always be true. Here's a case study from a developer using Audience Network through Instant Games. They tested increasing the ad frequency per, use, per user per day, and as you can see here, the weeks before a user would see about three ads per day. However, after they increased this to about five ads per day in order to increase their revenue, the revenue did not increase proportionately. Therefore, the users would have been exposed to a higher number of ads per day and could result in, result in churn. So make sure that you find the right balance in providing the best user experience. And finally, how can you get, how can you get the latest and greatest? So we make major releases every two to three months to bring you new features, new format designs, and tools to maximize your revenue. Our SDKs go through an extensive QA process to ensure stability, and we have a strict deadline for our product teams to submit features to the latest version of an SDK to give several weeks for our QA team to test out every device and, com and complete every user interaction, allowing us to remove any issues before we ship them out to you. So the key takeaways are that our latest SDK is built with loads of new improvements for users and publishers. So please install or update to access these. You'll then also be able to take advantage of rewarded video, which is driving growth. And IAP and ads are complementary. So think about your ad strategy and integration as you develop your game. Now let's take a look at rewarded video. As we saw before, gamers have a really positive opinion on rewarded video. To understand why this is, we need to understand the rewarded video experience. Rewarded video is an ad type that puts players in control. So it gives them the choice to watch an ad in exchange for a reward within the game. And if the player does not want the reward, they can opt out of watching that ad. It's a user-initiated 
journey, and our research has shown that players love being able to gain additional benefits in the game without having to wait or spend real money. Rewarded video offers a win-win scenario for users, publishers, and for advertisers as well. As a player, it's a 100% opt-in experience. As a publisher, I'm incentivizing my users to get more engaged with my app by offering them cool things that keep them coming back, and the revenue isn't a bad perk either. And finally, as an advertiser, I'm getting a user that's engaged in the ad experience and positive brand association because my ad experience ends with a reward. So there's a lot of creative ways games and apps can introduce reward, rewarded video to their users. The key is to have some sort of value exchange with that user. That can be anything from a temporary unlock of a premium feature to virtual goods and currencies. By rewarding premium features, you're giving your non-payers an opportunity to taste a premium feature or good that they otherwise would not understand the value of. IAP conversions still average somewhere between about two to 5% in most publisher cases. So it's really important to think about how you're going to monetize the other 95% of your user base in a way that doesn't negatively impact your retention and your engagement. At the same time, we want to be mindful of cannibalizing your in-app purchase revenue. So playing around with the value of the rewards that you offer is really uh, important. If you're planning on adding rewarded video to your game or revisiting a current integration, you want to consider these three parts. The first is a descriptive entry point, giving the user a clear understanding of the value prop taking place in the game. The second is quality ad experience. This is the design for your ad experience. Uh, and you want that design to be in a way that reduces accidental clicks, which in the context of reward video means unintentional video starts. Accidental clicks have a bad impact on your user experience and they will likely impact the user in a way where it might increase churn. And lastly is informative messaging. Inform the player of what has happened. So when a player completes watching a video, present them with a reward, but also thank them for watching that video. This will reinforce that value exchange proposition in a positive way. And on the other hand, if you're going to withhold the reward, let them know why. A simple message like stop watching, you'll not receive the reward will inform us users that they're not getting the reward and let them know what they need to change in their behavior the next time to receive it. So I want to show you some reward video integrations and entry points that we've completed over the years from working with our gaming partners to give you a clear idea of best practices with rewarded video. This integration has proven to be successful not only from a monetization standpoint um, for also, but also preserving and in some cases even enhancing that player experience. Before we get started, I do want to note that the integrations that I'm talking about are all included in a white paper that we recently published on best practices for rewarded video, and you can access it through our website here. So to start, daily reward multiplier. This integration offers a reward for return for returning to the game on a daily basis. For example, you can provide a change, a chance to engage with a reward video ad to double the earnings. And this means that you can run a high volume of these ads and that they don't commonly impact in-app purchase negatively. The second is in-app store. This integration is a natural addition to the user interface. In-game store ads are a great way to monetize players who are in a purchase mindset, but, not, but may not want to spend actual money. So this integration is a natural addition to the user interface, but often creates little emotional attachment and can actually only be run at low volumes. Next, we have the home screen entry point. Because its location is a very high visibility and high reach entry point, um, it typically leads to high volumes of impressions. And this integration is excellent for players who may never otherwise navigate to the store. This placement can also be useful for hooking new users on the value exchange. And then we have the Add Lives. This is one of the most popular rewarded video entry points. 
This entry point has a very high temptation factor and limited alternative routes for players to take and therefore creates a high emotional attachment. So it typically sees a high opt-in rate. Now we have decreased wait time. A lot of mobile games these days ask players to wait a certain amount of time in order to get access to new lives or energy. So with this entry point, you can offer the option to bypass the waiting time. Next, we have in-game hints. In theory, this can be used in any kind of game, but we found it particularly well suited for puzzles and board games. For example, in exchange for watching a rewarded video, you can give players access to a clue or a hint to progress through a part in the game. In the power up or booster reward entry point, you can offer players a power up before or even during a level in exchange for watching an ad. This power up can help players complete a level more easily and progress through the game. And finally, we have the end of game mul multiplier. After completing a level or mission, players are often rewarded. Why not use that opportunity opportunity to engage players by doubling the reward with a video ad. And this is relatively easy to integrate from a user interface standpoint and offers a high temptation factor as well. As a side note to interstitial and rewarded video, Playables is also an ad format that allows people to try an, an app through an interactive experience within the ad. The ability to try the app before downloading drives greater engagement with the ad, more downloads of the advertised app and a greater retention. This is currently being tested with rewarded video and interstitials, but remember that using the latest SDK version will give you access to all of our new ad innovations as they're rolled out. So it seems that my presentation was very comprehensive. I don't have any questions coming through yet, but while I give you all some time to think about a couple, I do wanna note that some of you might not be able to see the option to integrate rewarded video in Monetization Manager as we are still in the beta phase of this product. So we are limiting the type of verticals to gaming, news, and dating apps at the moment. Gaming is, 100% open to self-serve. So if you do have a gaming app, you should be able to access re rewarded video immediately. Um, but if you have a dating and news, it is available by review. So if you are interested in accessing rewarded video and you don't see the option, drop us an email with your app ID, uh, link to the app store for Google Play or Apple iTunes, and give us a description of your rewarded video experience. And we should be able to review the eligibility of your app. So we do have, all right, one question. Uh, how does Facebook Audience Network perform on rewarded video compared to other ad networks? So this is a great question. Um, based on feedback from our gaming partners, Audience Network is typically very strong. Um, in terms of CPM and fill rate in the first position um, in the waterfall, especially in tier one countries. We, we see lower demand regions also having really high fill rate as we do have access to 7 million advertisers on Facebook. Another question of how many rewarded video ads should I serve in my game? This is a great question and it does ultimately depend on your game. So uh, we spoke a little bit about the rewarded video entry point opportunities. I would take a look at those um, opportunities within your game and determine where, that, where the best points of entry are within your game to show rewarded video. Um, you'll want to allow your users to opt into the format, and so you don't want to force them to view it. And we do recommend frequency capping these to ensure that you know the value of the rewards not diminished, and you're not cannibalizing your in-app purchases if you are using a hybrid model.
Another one, I, I've seen a countdown of rewarded video ads, um, watching 20 ads to unlock an item. So this is a, this is a very clear cut case and we do not, um, we don't recommend this at all. Um, this is actually a, this is not a great user experience. Um, and it's not how rewarded video is meant to be used. So at Audience Network, we do have a team that does monitor ads and the ad experience. So if publishers are found to do this or offer some sort of you know, monetary incentive to view the ad or something like that, you will get a, a warning and potentially be um, removed from the network. And our policy team does uh, review this proactively. I'll give another second for um, for any last minute questions and all right, one more. Do we have control over what app and games our ads are being shown? So this this relates to the advertiser side um, and targeting a given app. And it's not something that we offer through audience network on the publisher side. Um, you get to have control over the type of advertisers that end up in your app. So in the monetization manager dashboard, you can go in and block any specific games, pages, or app categories that you don't want to be shown in your app. So you have control in that sense. Um, a question on playable ads and interstitials. Uh, do you see the performance differences between high-end devices and low-end devices? So this is a good question. We don't have clear um, indicators between what is you know, classified as high-end devices or low-end devices. Um, our apps are currently, Audience Network currently supports Android and iOS, and there are differences in terms of um, performance in Android apps and iOS apps, um, given you know, the different user demographics within them, but they are subjective um, on an app by app basis. That's a great question, thanks. So it does look like we are at the end of our questions. Um, thank you all for joining today. You'll receive a, a survey at the end of this webinar, so please do take some time to complete it. We really appreciate your feedback and we do use it to make um, improvements to our future webinars, so please do take a minute to answer those. And thank you all for joining today and participating, um, and I hope you enjoy your week. <laughs>